we've been studying the issue of competitiveness for more than three decades. And over the years, we've tried to stay abreast of the latest thinking uh, on competitiveness. For example, we've been looking at the issue of sustainability and how it impacts competitiveness. And we've been working with international experts over the last few years in order to integrate it better into our work. In other words, we've been looking at the extent to which countries are addressing challenges in terms of sustainability in the social area and in the environmental area in order to ensure that their growth and their rising prosperity is sustainable. What we're looking at in the Global Competitiveness Report is the extent to which countries around the world are putting into place the factors and policies that are necessary for ensuring rising prosperity for their citizens. And really, that means that we're looking at their productive potential. And we look at things that range from the more basic to the more complex. Governance and infrastructure, institutions, macroeconomic stability. We're also looking at the human resources base, uh, as well as the extent to which the markets are functioning well, goods, labor and financial markets. And finally, of course, innovation and the extent to which countries are able to come up with the latest products and processes. I would say that there's three key messages coming out of the report this year. If you look at really the drivers of competitiveness, uh, institutions, strong institutions and innovation are increasingly important. And this is borne out by the top five economies that we see, Switzerland, uh, Singapore, Finland, Germany, and the United States. We see that these are indeed five of the innovation powerhouses in the world. The second message coming out of the report is that we're seeing that we're moving away from the short-term firefighting that we've seen in the policy arena over the last few years. A lot of the risks that we were very concerned about about a year ago, such as the breakup uh, of the Eurozone, did not happen, and this is a good thing. Indeed, a number of European countries have actually been putting into place a number of reforms, and this is excellent. However, much still remains to be achieved, not only in Europe, in other countries as well. If you look at the large emerging market BRIC economies, for example, you will see that although they they have been growing briskly in recent years. Uh, we've seen a slowdown uh, more recently, and so these countries, in order to continue to grow rapidly into the future, really will need to put into place many structural reforms uh, going forward. The third message uh, coming out of the report is the fact that in order to make all of these changes, we will really need to see cooperative leadership among business, government, and civil society. Really only working together will we ensure that the global economy really gets back on track.